Hi, welcome to CCTV Channel 17's Live at 525, the Preservation Burlington Show. Preservation Burlington is a nonprofit 501c3 organization, and our mission is to preserve and protect the historic architecture and livability of Burlington through education and advocacy. Um, ideally, more education than advocacy, if everything in a perfect world. Um, so, tonight, I'd like to um, welcome back uh, Patricia Arroyo, who's been a guest before who ran the show for how many years? Two, three. Oh, I think it was more like 13 or 14. <laughs> over. But, it only seemed like that sometimes. Anyway, no, it always does, doesn't it? Always it always does, yeah. I know. Uh, thanks for being on the show. I know you were on before and we talked about your whole social media, you know, apparatus and, and presence and the uh, traveling for history. So um, do you want to just give viewers a, a, bring them up to speed again on what that all is? Sure. I'm a, uh, so my YouTube channel is called Traveling for History, One L in Traveling. If I ever do another name for a show, I will not have something where I have to keep telling people how to spell <laughs> a word. Right. But uh, so I'm also, so everywhere else, so uh, uh, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, I'm also at Traveling for History mm. with the one L. And on Twitter, I'm Traveling for High One. So Traveling for H-I, numeral one. Okay. I know, Traveling for History is too long. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> too, yeah. Many, too, too many characters. Too many characters. Yep, yep. So now, how long have you been doing that? You... I just had an anniversary. I'm starting my third year. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you've been everywhere. Where have you been since you were on last? Or, wait, what are some of your recent favorites? Great question. I, have, I sent some photos over um, much earlier today on um, a covered bridge in, um, and uh, let's see, a, a, different, a, a regular bridge. Um, and then, but the, the covered bridge has this, all right, so let me just start with this. Yeah. So this is officially the Cambridge Junction covered bridge. And uh, it's also known as the Junction covered bridge, but originally it was the Poland covered bridge. So why was it called the Poland covered bridge? Who was this Poland guy? Well, he was Luke P. Poland, who was a lawyer and then became the Chief Justice of the uh, Vermont Supreme Court. He became a representative and then a senator in the U.S. Congress. Um, so he was... He, he, Around he, when? So uh, the late 1800s. Late 1800s? Yeah. So the, uh, when he retired, he came back to Vermont. I think he was in Waterville. Um, I don't see it here, but uh, my cheat sheet is in front of me here. <laughs> so the, uh, the people in Waterville and the uh, next town, so the next town over from the Poland Covered Bridge is Waterville, and the next town after that is Belvedere. And the people in those two towns wanted a, a uh, shorter way to get to where the bridge is now, and that's because Cambridge Junction was a significant railroad junction mm. in, in the, the 1800s. In fact, I want to say this right because two different rail lines were there. Uh. It was the, uh, was where the Vermont Division of the Portland and Ogdensburg met the Burlington and Lamoille Railroad. Mm. Okay. I know. So, so they wanted to be able to get to the train. In a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to accomplish this, they needed a bridge and a road to get there. So the uh, so they approached Cambridge, the town of Cambridge, and Cambridge said, <laughs> no. And the reason they, so, made, they said that was made sense, really. The, the, most of their residents would not benefit from the bridge, and it would raise taxes. Mm -hmm. And speaking as a person who has property taxes, nobody wants more taxes. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. Never a popular selling Never point. Never a popular selling point. But uh, Judge Poland took this on in his retirement project, and he sued the town of Cambridge. Oh. And won. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the cost of the bridge was estimated between six, it, that was going to cost between six and $10,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to get an idea of what that is in, in equivalent to today's dollars, uh, $6,000 in 1880 would be equivalent to about $176,000. Mm -hmm. And ten grand would be just over $293,000 oh, wow. in yep. today's dollars. So not chump change by any stretch oh, of the imagination. No. But they still had to build it. So it's named Poland Covered Bridge for him. Now, if you're thinking that once they built this thing, he was the first to dance through it. Uh-huh. <laughs> In, you know, right. a Cut victory, the ribbon a, a victory and dance. skip and hop and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, he died before it was finished. Oh, jeez. I know he died in his hay field. But so, uh, quick question before we go on to another one of your, because uh, I want to hear about the other bridge. But um, so, how do you get your ideas? Uh, you know, like, uh, 
do you do research first, then you go see the thing? Do you stumble on a bridge like this, and then you're like, oh, I got to get the backstory to this? How how does that generally happen? So generally, I I, I typically film uh, buildings or structures. Bridges are considered structures mm -hmm. uh, on the National Register of Historic mm -hmm. Places. That's a, that's one place I look. Um, I like cemeteries, so I'd like to be walking in the cemetery. Oh, great. Less so this time of year. Um, and then I sometimes talk about people because sometimes I find interesting stories along the way. Historic markers, I like them a lot. War memorials, I love them. Mm -hmm. I will say that historic marker videos and war memorial videos are not well watched, but <laughs> I like them, so I still film them. So keep doing them, yeah. Yeah, so still, so. It's a chunk of history. It's a chunk of history, and you'd learn the darndest things mm -hmm. from historic markers. I was driving through um, Montpelier and um, saw this state marker, so <laughs> <laughs> found a place to park on, some, on grass somewhere. And uh, it was, a, it was a, a historic marker about uh, this area north of Pillar that was uh, an industrial area. You, you wouldn't tell that now. Mm -hmm. um, I did see some buildings I thought looked like boarding houses, which would make sense considering it was Right, it's probably area. worker housing, yeah. 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 So I, I hope the people in the, at the state are listening because I know they wonder when they put those markers up if anybody stops and reads them. <laughs> Well, I'm not the yeah. only one, but the, you know, there's, I belong to a whole bunch of Facebook groups, and for the most part, I forget which ones I belong to. Uh -huh. I tend to, because I Same post, here, yeah. I post my videos to the appropriate groups, and um, where was I going with that? So, oh, Markers, I, historic markers. That's right, thank you. So I noticed, I went and looked up state historic markers thinking there must be a group for that, not one in Vermont, hmm. on, on Facebook, and I thought about starting one, but oh my gosh, one more thing. Yeah, yeah, just another Facebook group to be. To then moderate. But then moderate, yeah, and administer and all that. They want that headache. Yeah, yeah they are, but they are fun. I know the one, um, you know, uh, my boat's at Point Bay Marina. It's a beat up old boat. But um, I drive that way sometimes, and there's a marker by the train tracks there. And it talks about, I can't remember the guy's name, but he's also buried in Burlington. He was a naturalist, and he's the one that discovered the whale skeletons in Vermont. Oh, Perkins? I th <sighs> Hmm. Maybe not. No, I can't. Rem I can't remember. It's terrible. I can't remember anything. But I remember <laughs> s driving by there, and I saw a mention of the whale tail. So I, like you, I pulled over. I got out. and said, "What the heck?" Because I was about to play this character in a cemetery tour that Preservation Burlington was going to do in, in that fall. And I read it, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, it's this guy. This is where he found those skeletons." And then, you know, he was from Burlington. It was. Pretty interesting story. So, okay, so you're really just you're scanning things for something historic, or as you're driving around and you see older historic buildings or markers, you stop and then you start doing. You do the research because I know you videotape these, right? Oh yes. So do you just hop out and start talking with a selfie stick, or do you research it and then go back? What do you do? Well, it, it depends. If it's really far away, I always hope I have enough research done ahead of time mm -hmm. uh, because driving two hours one way, is, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't typically drive two hours. I was meeting a friend down two hours away from me. But, but I, ha I do drive an hour, hour and a half fairly regularly. Um, but the reason I had done, I found the backstory on this was because the, the original posting, uh, so the, uh, when I look at the National Register stuff, it's typically through Wikipedia, which is a great starting point. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's, that's all I use, but sometimes it leads to more things. And there was a, a really, uh, um, in fact, I do have it right here. So, it's, so this is from Wikipedia. And it said, not everyone was pleased with the new bridge, as noted in a newspaper article on June 15, 1887. Quote, Judge Poland has caused the town of Cambridge to be inflicted with a bridge and a road at an expense of six to $10,000, which as shown will be of no material benefit to anyone but himself. <laughs> it will be known as the Poland Bridge, except to the taxpayers of Cambridge who will christen it the Bridge of Size, unquote. <laughs> who doesn't love that? So maybe do research, what is this? And you know, there we have it. Um, pretty amazing. A story, but uh, and actually, that bridge has a, a, a state historic marker. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Which, there's such a treasure. Covered bridges, you know. I know through mm -hmm. Vermont and New Hampshire and, and Maine, the covered bridges. Even upstate New York has a, f a bunch still. But you know, it's it's one of those things where you know you don't see them every. I'm you know Shelburne Museum. I get to cross one every day, several times a day. You know, um, and I know uh, they're just really interesting. The different builders who are a handful of builders working all over the. All over New England, putting them up, you know, getting their six to ten thousand dollars. 
<laughs> yeah, that's uh, and actually, if I could show another piece of this bridge, um, let's see. Oh, yeah. All right, so this actually has two sh two truss systems in it. Mm -hmm. It has a king post truss and a burr arch truss. Mm -hmm. So either truss would have handled the load and the uh, stability. So the load, when I say load, the deck, whatever is crossing the deck, it needs to hold up, mm -hmm. uh, hold up to that. And then um, the structure, the stability of making sure it stays in place without leaning and things like that. Um, either truss would have held it perfectly fine and it carried the load, but by combining them, it, it's guaranteed. Very overbuilt, very overbuilt. Overbuilt, mm -hmm. yes. And then there was a moment, um, let's see, in 1995, a vehicle struck one of the king posts. <laughs> it was leaning, don't you know? But when the, when the uh, when this truck hit the uh, king post, it straightened out the lean. <laughs> oh, but it damaged the king post, so the structural integrity had been compromised. Oh, so they must they repaired it, I imagine. They replaced the decking with steel I beams underneath, and mm -hmm. then replaced the wood planking, and then behind the trusses there are steel plates. Oh, okay. Um, so and the burr arch truss that's there is, I think, there are only nine bridges, covered bridges left in Vermont that have a burnt arch the, truss. The, uh, I want to say, where's this? Um, Jeffersonville. Jeffersonville? Yep. The one at the museum is a burr arch truss from, I can't remember, I think Cambridge, I'm not sure. It is from Cambridge. It is from Cambridge. I didn't remember, okay. it's funny, I filmed that one, but I uh, wasn't able to walk in all the way. Oh, okay. It was locked. <laughs> Oh, Museum you can jump closed. over the fence. Nobody will do anything. There is a hidden camera. <laughs> there is a hidden camera, I'm but sure. Just drop my name and you'll be fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, so Ron said that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he said he I was close to retirement, but now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, and then I have one more picture of the um, bird truss. Oops. Did I get that right? Yeah. So the light was up high. You know, the, the openings were up high, and this is. A, was told mostly so horses wouldn't be afraid crossing the bridges, right? Oh, really? Well, I hadn't heard that. Yep. Yeah, so, because, you know, late, mid to late 1800s, getting a horse to walk across a bridge up over a thing was tricky then. So oh. the, the bridges are often covered part three, two, three quarters of the way up so that they can't see anything and they just go across. Oh, well, that's an interesting thing. I'll have to remember that. I could be making it up, but I think that's what I've read. <laughs> Well, so what's this other bridge that you do? You have pictures of this other bridge I you do. mentioned? I do, absolutely. This, um, with this regular bridge? Well, yeah. Um, just a moment. Oops. Yep. Um, so there's this bridge here. This, I know. I wanted to include this. I, I don't want to talk about the truss overall, mm -hmm. um, but. The bridge is beautiful. If you ever have an opportunity to uh, be crossing a bridge as a passenger, because if you're driving like I usually do, you know, trying to do this yeah. is um, awkward and dangerous. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, this is the Douglas and Jarvis parabolic, uh, there's a Douglas and Jarvis patent, parabolic truss, iron bridge. Mm. because it's a nice long name. It yeah. is on the National Register of Historic Places, and yes, it has an historic marker mm -hmm. as well. Not all National Register sites have the marker, that state right. historic marker. Um, so That's pretty I neat. love the, uh, that piece at the top that tells you um, who built it. Oh, okay. Uh, can't, I don't have a clear picture of that. I don't it's very steampunk. The bridge. It is. Well, it's iron, too. I'm guessing turn of the century again, late 1800s, early 1887. Same year, same year as the covered bridge, actually. Yeah. Um, let's see. So William Douglas uh, was from Bingham to New York, and um, his bridge used less metal than conventional trusses, mm. so uh, without sacrificing strength. So the lower cost and distinctive shape contributed to its success. This, and um, let's see, I know I have a picture from the side, and uh, there we go. Oh, wow. That is a parabolic truss, mm -hmm. and because it looks like an eyeball. Yeah, uh, I like the crenellation behind the placard up top. Yeah, there's just a lot of ornamentation for. Oh, it's fancy dancy. <laughs> for what's ostensibly just a utilitarian structure, you know? Yes. Pretty neat. And the, uh, it's actually in, um, Well, it's two bridges 
uh, married together, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So the big part that we see that's with the upper layer there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's the parabolic truss bridge. And then there's a pony truss, the one that we see to the left. Oh, yep. Okay. And what I love about a pony truss, I love always and never because I, I hardly ever get to say those, <laughs> but uh, I had read that a pony truss will always be a low bridge mm. and will never have any superstructure over it because it's low. Oh, of course, right. So you have to be able to pass right through it with whatever you're yeah. driving, horse and buggy or yeah. Mack truck. <laughs> well, Mack truck could probably, I'm not sure about the width, but, uh, <laughs> right. but yeah, the, uh, the bridge is gorgeous and uh, that's why I wanted to include it because it's not, it's, uh, I just found it really interesting. It's a pedestrian bridge now. They stopped traffic and I want to say 1976. Mm -hmm. um, what you don't see in this picture is to the right of it is, um, I think it's a dam because when I was there, there were falls going over it. Ah, okay. Um, and there's big signs warning people not to swim near no there. swimming, right. Yeah. That's uh, always good advice. Don't swim near the dam. <laughs> one would think. Yeah. So. Have you seen, uh, I know uh, Bob McCullough was on one because he did the bicycle book. And then I think prior to that, he did one on bridges. Oh, wow. So I had him on here. So, and it also it runs a gamut from the covered bridges all the way through these iron bridges up into the, you know, mid 21st century, I guess, up to 1950s. Wow. Um, just because this structural engineering was adapting and changing so rapidly, it was just, they're, they're really interesting, you know. They are really interesting. They're beautiful. I mean, we're talking form and function. It's, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, it mm -hmm. makes, uh, yeah, that's just a beautiful bridge. And, and the, uh, yes, the, the cresting behind it, uh, behind yeah. the Yeah, yep, very the big, big Victorian, you yeah. <laughs> know, very Victorian. Uh, so what, what other stuff besides bridges? Do you love? War memorials, actually. Yep. My favorite one thus far was the one I saw in Cornwall, uh, Vermont. Um, they're typically at the town green. Yep. 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 And uh, it's right across from the town hall. Now, the town hall in Cornwall is on the National Register. Mm -hmm. And I filmed that. And while I was up there, I had a few other things to film. It's kind of nice sometimes when they're all close together. So the town hall was right there. The parsonage was, former parsonage was right there across the street. So the town green's in the center, mm -hmm. with the parsonage, the town hall, uh, you know, easy peasy. I'll War just cross Memorial. the street now. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you do, so in a situation like that, while you're filming for your YouTube channel, do you, do you, is that three episodes that you're getting yes. at one time? Yeah, because the state historic marker may be on the bridge, but that's a separate video. Mm -hmm. Gotta love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So how long does something like that take you when you're out in the field? How much time do you allot for you know, you go to a town green like that that's on the historic register and you've got like three cool things to look at and talk about in video. How long does that take? It takes as long as I can read it without do, saying stupid things and then having to start over again. Or, yeah. or looking at it and not even knowing what I'm reading. That, that's awful. Um, because if, if I don't say it right, other people are just going to think it's hollow. Um, maybe Which, they won't. But It's not going out live, is it? No. Okay, because no, I was no, going to say no. you have opportunity. Just make it long and you can edit, right, when you get home. I don't know how to edit from the center. Oh, okay. So I would have to chop it up into pieces and, and mm -hmm. yeah, no. It gets complicated. It does. It mm -hmm. does, and I'm lazy. So, uh, <laughs> well, I also have, you know, uh, the most I've ever filmed in one day was uh, 19 videos and 17 made the cut. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I had no more voice. Yeah. As you can imagine, that was up in Sheldon. Vermont, and uh, I had no more voice. I couldn't actually film anything for a few days because I, I was kind of talking like this. <laughs> like I smoked a pack of cigarettes. In or a, like in the Godfather. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, Michael, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's a, f that's a full day of taping. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was uh, um, when I filmed uh, the high school that day. I was filming at 8.30 in the morning, and then I drove... I like to drive as far out as I'm going to start and then film heading back home. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then that was, I filmed until oh, sun was setting. Mm. Yeah. It was, uh, that was a very long day. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember how many videos I got out, out of it that day, but uh, I didn't have to go out for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And that was the, when I was in Callis filming, that was the worst dirt road I've ever been on in my life. Washboard. It was, uh, no, no. It was, it was uh, mud. Just mud, really? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, my, I have a newer car now. It's I was going to say, what are you driving these days? It's a 2011 Toyota Highlander. Oh, okay. So it's okay. a base model, yep. much fancier base model than my last car was. Mm -hmm. um, 
which has uh, traction control, mm -hmm. um, four wheel drive all the time, yeah, and snow, a snow gear. A snow gear. A snow gear. What's a snow gear? Better than drive. <laughs> <laughs> really? I don't know. Uh, it seems to work better in snow, huh. but uh, my car was. I didn't have a snow gear, but my car was sliding to the right towards the trees mm. where there are never guardrails. I, I, how much are guardrails? They can't put guardrails on these <laughs> Yeah, no, these they're too roads. much money. They are. They are too much money. <laughs> More than six to $10,000, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, uh, it's kind of, uh, it, that's kind of scary. But I put in a snow gear. And was, I'm not one to pray, but I was praying that, because my next, my next stop on, ca on the, that same road, don't remember the name of it, was um, downhill. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, there was the fear of getting down the hill with, and being able to stop when it got down there yep. and being able to get back right, up the road. You're right, turning around coming back. Yeah, so um, because driving up the hill, I was sliding off to the right as well. <sighs> so it was just, uh, and the locals, it's fun to watch the locals, whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. I think I'll just do five and hopefully I get through this. They know what to expect and they're riding they the do. slide. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, so it's good though. It sounds like you can get almost anywhere now with your new new car, new truck. And I feel uh, like I can get to strange places that my car would say, "Are you kidding? No, I'm a show car." Yeah, right, 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 <laughs> but, right. Uh, but I do want to show the um, the war memorial I was just talking about. It had some interesting things on it that I had not seen before. Um, oh, that's not wrong direction. So this is the War Memorial itself. Oh, okay. And um, and where was this again? Cornwall. Cornwall. That's the town green. It's sitting on. It's uh, and it's across the street directly from the town hall. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you'll notice that there are so above below the uh, the pillar at the at there is that four sided piece, which has interesting information, mm. uh, such as this, which is uh, says World War Veterans. So this. Oh. This memorial is only the American Civil War and World War I. Oh, okay. Um, it doesn't say the Great War. They, they usually say the Great War, which is World War I. Right. So the second name on there is Earl H. Lapeer, who was killed at the Verdun Front November 10, 1918. Mm. The other man was also killed... Um, um, See me around October 1918? Yeah. October 13th, it looks like. McClellan. But November 10, 1918, that is the day before the armistice was signed, oh. which ended the war. Oh, jeez. <laughs> which, in the scheme of things, you know, we can look at that in hindsight and say, wow, that's terrible. Right. That he died the day before, but it was just another day yeah. at the time. Yeah, and so when it took so long for news to travel, people were fighting for a week afterwards, I'm sure. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then another... so. So another side of it. There are yeah, the, all four sides have writing, mm -hmm. and uh, so two of the sides have who was killed in in different battles. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was interesting as well. I mean, I've seen that a lot over time. Mm -hmm. um, this one though was particularly interesting. Uh, this is um, died in hospital. Oh. So and and at the bottom. Uh, we have uh, Alva K. Barlow, who was, quote, hung by gorillas. Oh, gee. I know. Oh. Wow. Robert yeah. Peck, some famous names. Mayo. I work with a Mayo. Ah. Yeah, there are names I certainly recognized, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, Good New England names. Yeah. And then I just want to also talk about my favorite, my, the favorite place I had... Um, to date, I have filmed, and um, let me just get all the way. This is all-time favorite? So far. <laughs> all right, so this is the place. Uh, this is the School Brick House um, Museum, the Georgia Historical Society Museum in Georgia, Vermont. Oh, okay. It was the district number eight school. It is on the National Register of Historic Places. I filmed this, this picture, and uh, and where I filmed it, I stood inside of Route 7. I don't recommend that at all, by the way. <laughs> uh, that was very scary, tractor trailers coming by, and I was kind of hoping I wasn't going to get right. instant don't weight loss. Don't step back. <laughs> yeah, instant weight loss. Whoa, suddenly thin. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh, wrong, wrong picture. Um, so, 
so I was um, talking to um, Cindy Plouffe, mm -hmm. who was the who is the uh, president of the Georgia Historical Society. And when I was there, she just suddenly started this impromptu tour of the place. Oh, great. <laughs> so record. And then she has said that she didn't want to be in the pictures. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, if you watch that video, you'll see her hands because she was pointing at things. And oh, when she was showing off the um, those bottles you were just seeing, yep. yeah, that was part of a barber shop. There's your yours truly yeah, with the camera treatment. Yep, Lucky Tiger. <laughs> yeah, but but she had opened one of the doors and she was showing off the linens that were still inside. Mm. It was phenomenal. Um, and this is all within the school yes. building. Yeah, it's a seasonal operation. It's, um, yeah, they're open every Saturday from July 9 to September mm -hmm. in uh, 1 to 3 p.m. Oh, and then I they see. have yeah. another building that um, we're supposed to get together this season. It, it, it's um, not open the way the other building is to the public. You have to schedule Special an appointment. Special appointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's going to uh, show me that. And it was funny, you know, filming in... Um, Franklin County, I filmed um, three different historical society museums. The St. Albans Museum, which is an historical society museum, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Georgia Historical Society Museum, and the one in Sheldon, the his their historical society museum. I had never before seen a treadmill that an animal would walk on to make things work until I was at the St. Albans Museum and then I couldn't stop seeing them. Oh, right, <laughs> but I had never right. seen them before. The wow. Historical Society Museum in um, the Winooski one at the mill yeah. doesn't have anything like that. And why would it? It was Winooski. But, uh, but those are the three sure had it. And I giggled when I was, when I was filming the Sheldon Historical Society Museum. I was like, oh, my God, another one. <laughs> that's right. I thought those only existed in cartoons. I didn't know. <laughs> I know. Where's the anvil, too, right? Yeah, that's right, right. <laughs> but these are some of the places um, I have filmed. But uh, I do upload every day of the week. You do? I do because I'm a glutton for punishment. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, I'm trying to film some more from home because who wants to be out in weather like today? Although, well, how much did we get? Three, four inches? It wasn't yeah, really... um, yeah, something. It was probably a little more, I think. My driveway, I, I shoveled my roof today because it's a oh. flat roof. And, and it's generally fine, but there's one spot where if it starts to melt, it, it'll leak into the house. So I Ew. just shovel it off, you know. But, but yeah, and it was like, it felt like five or six inches. It oh. was pretty high up there, you know. Okay. But, um, yeah, so, um, so when you make, when, so you... You get your footage, you go home. Do you send an email blast out to anybody? Do you have a, a, an idea of how many viewers you have? Because I know on this show we have three. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have 386 subscribers to my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I'm on um, Instagram. Right, the others you tag on all the others. So. Well, I, um, I have, so when most of my videos are um, premiere videos, mm -hmm which means uh, also all videos go live at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ones that say premiere on them have a live chat attached. Mm. So it's a chance to uh, talk to yours truly. Interact, you ask questions. There you go. I interact and ask questions with still yours truly. So uh, <laughs> um, although I was asleep for the one that went live this morning, I was <laughs> fell asleep at 6 p.m. It was a snow day. <laughs> oh, it was a snow brain. Um, so... Uh, um, but, but anyway, I do, I am usually awake and we do chat and it lasts as long as a video is live. Mm -hmm. um, Fun. Yeah, it, it can be. Yeah, it sure can be. So, uh, so yeah, there's that. And then, so before that goes live, I post to Facebook. I have my, my, my personal Facebook and then my, um, uh, my, um, traveling for history one. Yeah. I post to Instagram. I post to TikTok. Well, I think, you know, before HGTV picks, scoops you up or, or National Geographic TV <laughs> scoops you up, I, I want to keep inviting you back just so you can fill us in on some of the stuff you've seen between times we've sat down. I know if we had more time, it'd be fun to have you just come in here and do a five, ten minutes of the la latest, greatest thing you've done, you know. But thanks again, Patricia. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Well, thanks for having me. It's, it's always fun. fun to come back. It's always fun. It's yeah. always fun. And I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in to CCTV Live at 525 in the Preservation Burlington Show. Um, for more information on Burlington history, our tours, events, uh, to get a marker for your historic house, go to preservationburlington.org, and we'll see you next month. Thanks, everybody.